Yes. Yeah, okay, which is where you use OBS. So, right. in theory, it should work. Right. Oh, nope, I'm echoing still. All right, I owe you a steak. <sighs> it doesn't fix my problem, though. No, but think of it this way, steak. <laughs> Fair enough, steak. <laughs> All right, let's try this. Let's just cut these out right here. Now, now, how does it sound? Are you still watching the stream? I am. Yeah. Now I can't hear you at all. Oh, wait. Those but, two go into there. But it's good. It's good. Oh, because loopback is going into there. It's good. So if I take this and add that to here... Now I should be able to hear you. Okay. Can you hear me? No. It says I can hear you, but I... What? Wait, what the fuck? What? No, you dipshit. <sighs> mm. Well, that was interesting. Oh. Can you hear me again? Okay. Echo test. Echo test. Echo test. <laughs> yeah, no, there's no echo, but, but he, he can't, can't hear us. us. Oh. Now I can what hear What the you. hell? Oh. Oh. Wait. wait there's there's echo, echo now. Now that you can hear us, there's echo. Yeah. Mm. Say mm. something again. You guys are coming through 11 and 12. Something, 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 something. something. Mm -hmm. Yep. Something, 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 something else. Something entirely different. Still echoing. Is, is it still uh. you, though? Oh, wait. No. Hold on. Hold on. Let's hear. Hold on. Just one of me. Just one of you? Oh. Good. Is it just one of me? We solved it. Did we do it? Yeah, there's just one of everybody. Yeah! <laughs> we did it! Wait, right. wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Hold on. Wait. I want to make sure that we're hearing Amos. Five. Four, three, two, one. We got it. Okay, now let's Excellent. see if you guys can hear the sounder. Okay. Oh, we don't care. We don't care. We don't, yeah, we don't care. care. Just let us know when it's done. <laughs> yep. So, so just give the verbal cue of... <laughs> Yeah, you know, whatever that you're about to play the sound, and then and then just when you say something else, then we know it's done. There you go, perfect. Yep. So it doesn't right. matter. We're good. Let's go. It really doesn't matter. Start the show. Let's go. Let's do it. Jesus. It's even, Amos. So you start it. <laughs> For fuck's sake. <laughs> As if I didn't need another kick in the pants. Amos, it's your turn to start. <laughs> All right, now I, I, I hold on. I gotta bring bring my fucking show notes up real quick because you know I don't have this shit memorized. <laughs> okay, they're up. <clears throat> on this episode of the Ritual Misery Podcast, the year. That was 2020. I mean, 2021. I can't. We're having deja vu. That... It, it's almost like we don't know how to start a podcast without technical issues. It must be 2020 or 2016. <laughs>
Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 290 for Tuesday. Actually, it's Wednesday, the 29th of December, 2021. Wow, let's just do all the things today. This is the show where two lifelong friends and their guests celebrate all things geek. I'm Amos, that's Kent, and we have with us the one, the only Richard Gunther. And now you two talk for a minute while I fix a few things in the background, because that's obviously what I'm going to spend the show doing. <laughs> of course it is. Whoa, I am so glad to be back. I think we were talking when we were preparing for this. It's been a year. Like, it's... Not since we've all talked necessarily, but it's been a year since I've been on the show. It was yes. this show. That's crazy. There was a time where I was your most frequent guest. <laughs> I have right. lost that status, I think. I don't know. We we did so few episodes in 2021. You might still hold that crown. <laughs> yeah, so few episodes and even fewer guests. Because, yeah, that's because right. Because obviously... Yeah, that um, is okay. I am thrilled to have you back on the show, though, Richard, even if it is uh, the first time in a year. Uh, it's always a delight to have you, and it's always wonderful that we get to talk about the year that was with you. Yeah, and, and you know, you're joking about it, but a lot of this year felt like a lot of last year, uh, mm -hmm. or just a continuation of the year, but we did it seemed get out of March finally. Um, so I'm really happy about that. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, we're on to uh, a uh, new phase of disasters. I was going to ask what's, uh, what's the current March date? I, I don't know. I got, I took it down off my board. So wow. I, I stopped counting. <laughs> it's on... April now. <laughs> right, right, right. I stopped counting on March 16th, 2021 because at March 365, it kind of become or 366 actually it became ridiculous so <laughs> that's when it became ridiculous <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> yeah fair fair point yeah that 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 was that was that was the the the, the final line right that's like you know what we've only, or we've already had a year of the same day yeah or month yeah. Or so so did you guys did you guys have um, amazing Christmas parties like uh, you know office gatherings of like you know 100 plus people and uh, uh, good good conversation good close quarters conversation with um, lots of strangers? <sighs> I know people who did, <laughs> and yeah, I yeah it just baffles me. Yeah, I did nothing of the sort. I didn't I didn't leave the house. No. I um. Just, just the people that live here were here, and that was it. <laughs> We've, uh, as far as we know, as far as our little home tests can prove or, or indicate, we are all COVID-free, but we've been getting, like, it, we've had something running through the house, and it's hit all of us, and it's just like three days mm. of just zero energy and then a day of the poops. And Oh. Yeah, so that's kind of been running through our house. So we just kind of haven't done much of anything, really. Uh, mm -hmm. We did Christmas dinner last night, uh, which is why we end up having to delay the show a day. Uh, because on my phone, my personal calendar and my Google calendar look exactly the same. However, my family can't see my Google calendar, and I thought they knew we had this scheduled. And, of course, <laughs> I saw that it was scheduled, and no one else saw that it was scheduled. So, um my wife yeah. had planned dinner to start at like four, then recording started at six. That should have been plenty of time to eat dinner, do a little cleanup, and then head down here. And instead, dinner started at 7.15 or 6.45 or something like that. And I was like, well, that's just holy shit. Um, no, I didn't know. We didn't do any big parties or anything else. I didn't even set up the rig. Usually, I set up a, a, a stream for the grandparents to watch the littles open presents and things like that. Mm. I, did, I didn't even do that mm. this year. I was like, that was, there was no point. Um, mm. They had plenty of presents, um, but it was just it's kind of blah all the way around. Mm -hmm. mm. I think Yeah, that, we kind of skipped it. We, <laughs> we, we were like, well, we're, we're going to be moving. So we don't really feel like, packing and unpacking and wrapping and unwrapping it's just like we we literally skipped it we watched die hard on christmas that's what we, that's how we celebrated <laughs> christmas the go. best christmas movie <laughs> um 
Yeah, I mean, and you, you got to figure you and Edward are both self-employed, so it's not like you were not going to, you know, oh, it's Christmas Day, I can't work today. So you may have, you know, made the choice, but it was still always just kind of, you know, no one was telling you you couldn't. Um, and yeah. I, I, and I actually end up working on Christmas Day. I end up getting a bunch of editing done and stuff like that, so. I, I think he actually did end up doing some working, <laughs> but... Um, but I did not. He, and did, he did it on the sly while you were napping. That's what he did. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it ended up just being a day, another day of projects around the house, actually, as we're getting the place ready to sell and and all of that. So it's just been, it, it was just easier not to deal with it. Uh, one funny point, though, we did have turkey ready to cook, <laughs> except we didn't defrost it. And didn't realize that until it was too late. Oh, no. So, so we actually had Christmas dinner on Sunday night. Okay. And we had a really good pasta dinner on Christmas night. So, you know, I can't complain about that. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's not bad. Uh, turkey sickles, not high on the list of Christmas dinner options. No. No. Because then we would have the poops. <laughs> Quite possibly. <laughs> right. uh, most likely, yes. <laughs> you Would you like a leg or some salmonella? Uh, how about both? Give me a little each. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, mostly uh, what I've been doing lately is just prepping for this, the, the streamathon, and that is going swellingly, I can tell you. Swellingly, yes. Um. In the, in the last 48 hours, we've had, I think, two schedule changes, uh, one of them completely out of the blue uh, due to COVID. Um, one of our streamers got their booster shot, and it didn't take very well to them, so they had to back out of the streamathon happening in, in two days. So hopefully they get they get to feeling better. Um, but we got to fill in. Uh, now Mike TV of GSG of Get Set Go is going to join us for the streamathon. He's got a whole hour to himself to entertain and bewilder us. And we all expect him to hop on, sing some songs, maybe write a couple songs. He's probably going to hop on and like paint figurines or something. I don't even know what he's going to do. Like, <laughs> that would be fantastic. That, that would just be so good. He's, he's in there knocking out his Warcraft uh, or his, uh, his Warhammer 40K uh, yeah, right. models. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I wouldn't put it past him. I, um, I, I am expecting some some originals, though, from uh, from Mike TV. Uh, he's, he's an incredible talent, and uh, he was very eager to jump on board when we uh, gave him the invitation. So I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to... Uh, uh, to his stream for sure. Yeah, he was he was one of the people. I guess he was like the primary person that, um, like the biggest name, I guess, uh, that let us know. Hey, you're you still looking for spots for the streamathon? Uh, I just got to check in my email, and we were like, ah, it's already full up. And he was like, ah, shit. Um, yeah. So first person we thought of when when we had the spot open, and he got back to us fairly quickly and was like, yes. And like, uh, you want the details? No, just. Just put my name down. We'll figure it out. So, 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 cool. where is he in the lineup? Because he is high energy. So, if he's strategically placed, this could go really well for everyone. He will yep, be it's, following um, right behind uh, the morning stream. Yep, right behind Scott Johnson and Brian Abbott, and right before Willie Scott, uh, W. Scott is one, um, Cinema Cinemavention, which. Is a show I've been on where we reviewed Die Hard. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, he's doing he's doing Ghostbusters for the streamathon. The original, right? Like 1984. The original. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. 1980. Is it four? No, I think it's like 87 or something, right? I don't know. Uh, mid 80s. It's definitely in the mid 80s. <laughs> Chat. Let us know when when was the original Ghostbusters? When, when did that come out? Oh, nineteen. Okay, no, it's nineteen eighty four. Weird. Oh, right. yeah. It's almost like it prepared yeah. that answer. <laughs> yeah, well done, Amos. You, you know how um, confident I, I was that I didn't even bother to look it up myself. <laughs> so you so you knew that fact, but I wonder how many facts you know that that it were 
more recent than 1984. <laughs> Let's find out. Can I please have your attention? In the last 30 minutes, Kent's done something. Now you've got a guess. He was very excited. Kent's games. Play with him. Play with him. That sounds awful. <laughs> it's COVID, All right, it's COVID guys, time. Our... We shouldn't be playing with anybody. Our... <laughs> Fucking our question. Omicron is coming week. out, and Ken's trying to get us to play with them. <laughs> hey, we're gonna play with each other over Skype. How about that, that sounds even worse. Uh... Whoa! <laughs> you, you just you just All went right, from guys. you just went from socially unacceptable to downright fucking naughty. Like, what is going on in your head right now? <laughs> Hey, I, I think that's an upgrade. Uh. <laughs> All right, guys. 2021 was a hell of a year, as we already th- declared. Um, but I wonder how much you guys remember that happened this year. Um, you each are going to get five questions. And, Richard, you're the guest. We're going to start with you. Okay. That means he what backloaded the... the hard ones. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, don't, don't, don't disclose my methodology here. All right, Richard. What was the name of the ship that blocked the Suez Canal for several days? Uh, <laughs> this was big on social media for yes. for quite some time. Lots of memes. Yes, and I didn't know what they were talking about the first couple times I heard about this because it's just like a phrase. And it was like, wait, well, you're you're talking about this like it's a thing. What are you talking about? I, I, I do not remember the name of it. I, I, I'm going to kick myself. I'm gonna oh, go. With, I'm, yes, gonna, I... I'm gonna go for the steel with green turds. No, it wasn't that. Uh, no. Um, but so the name of the company, I, I think, had green in the name of it. Uh, but the name of the ship was the Ever Given. Ever Given. Yes, I would not have gotten that. But <laughs> yeah, and and I've listened to so much about it and about the whole problem with the stuck ships and yeah mm, wow yeah okay All i right. I, I, think, I think the interesting part of that wasn't that so a, a lot of people that are not following the industry and i say that and it makes me sound so much more of an asshole than i am <laughs> people that aren't which fo- is a, that that is a feat yeah, that is a- uh, people that aren't following events <laughs> think that that the Ever Given was the cause of our current supply chain issues, and it was, oh. it was, no, it was, it was well was, underway. Yeah, it was merely one of the Legos that built the tower of shit that our supply chain is currently yeah. in right now. It yeah, was, it was just sure. the mo- most yeah. vocal of them. It was like the one that got all the attention. But there's so many other things from fires in in factories and foundries and. China and shit like that, and yep. yeah, it's it's been. That's only the most the most uh, the, the easiest one to the easiest. Yeah, apple it was to just it, it was very visible. Yeah, it was it was an a- exacerbating um, yeah. uh, issue, I guess. Okay, Amos, um, you said that I backloaded the hard questions, uh, so let's let's see if this one is. Well, now you're gonna uh, switch them around which... to prove me wrong because you're a <laughs> dick. Which country became a republic on the 55th anniversary of its independence? Fuck, I don't know. <laughs> this was so recent too, and I can't remember. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with. Uh, uh, oh shit! It was, it was it's, it's, uh, uh, it's a, it's it's like a Mediterranean or not a Mediterranean, a uh, a, a Caribbean uh, nation too. Or it's an African okay. nation because I think one of each happened this year. I'm going to go the, with the uh, prince visited to celebrate with them to honor it. Mm-hmm. Sounds good. I'm going to go with uh, Costa Rica. <laughs> Costa Rica is incorrect. Barbados. 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 Damn it! I knew it was a Caribbean island though. That's in the Caribbean. All right. right. I'm at least that correct. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> All right, Richard, which Central American country was the first to recognize Bitcoin as an official currency? Oh, shit. The... Mm, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Um, it's even a tech question. Come on. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I 
Argentina? Argentina is incorrect. Ugh. Amos, do you know the correct answer? Ecuador. No, it's not Ecuador either. It's El Salvador. El Salvador. Okay. All of this just goes to prove that I fucking failed. Actually, I passed geography. Like, I got I got like the best <laughs> best grade in the fucking class. Uh, I haven't used my geography in <laughs> thirty years. <laughs> you you don't yeah. need to. You have Google Maps. Right. That's right. Yes. <laughs> All right, Amos. Back over to you. In July, the 2020 Olympics were held in which city? And yes, you heard that right. The 2020 Olympics were held this year in which city? Amos. Tokyo. That is correct. Tokyo. Finally get to press the ding button you guys can't hear. <laughs> All right, Richard, you're a fan of space. So I yep. think this question's right up your alley. All right. NASA launched DART which is a test to learn how to protect the earth from what? Oh, um, uh, from, uh, um, uh, in incoming meteors. Very close. Very close. Incoming asteroids. So, there we go. Okay. Yeah. All right. So they become meteors once they enter the Earth's yeah. atmosphere. Yep, yeah. Yep. So, the, yeah, the idea the of it actually, being that once the meteors become asteroids, it's too late to protect us from them. <laughs> right, or the other right. way around. Yeah, the other that, way around. That's something else entirely. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's, that's a whole other. Like, physics have really fucked us at that point when a meteor becomes an asteroid. Um, DART actually stands for Double Asteroid Redirection Test. So... It's basically yeah. uh, the Bruce Willis movie the Armageddon. The Bruce Willis, yeah, yeah, Rush. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. Yep. All right, Amos, uh, here's another space question. Um, I'm 99.9% .9 sure Richard would get this one right, uh, but let's see Let's see if you've got this one. Always remembered as the astronaut who didn't get to walk on the moon with Aldrin and Armstrong, although he orbited it 30 times. He also passed away this year. Who am I talking Who was on the Apollo mission with uh, uh, Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong when Neil Armstrong became the first person to walk on the moon, but right. he was the pilot flying around. Right. Um, I don't remember his fucking name. I do not. And I was just thinking about this like last week when I was watching a TV show. <laughs> <laughs> about how how awful that guy must fucking feel, and now I can't remember. Yeah, I'm I'm in the same boat. I can't remember his name. Oh wow! No. I was I, 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 I really thought you would have had it, Richard. I, I'm it's very Michael Collins. Yes, Collins. Michael Collins. Collins. Yes. Yep. Rest in peace, Mike. Yep. Not Kevin Bacon. All right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, less than six degrees separated from Kevin Bacon, though. <laughs> of course. All right. <laughs> All right, Richard, your next question. Born Lawrence Harvey Zeger, he became probably the most famous television and radio interviewer in America. He also passed away this year. I have absolutely no idea. The name I was looking for was Larry King. That, wow. that really makes a lot of sense. I forgot that was this year. Yeah, I know. Yep. I think, when I, I think when that I found was the kicker for me. Information, yeah, when I found this piece of information, I was like, oh, my God. That was really, like, less than a year ago. Holy crap. Wow. Okay. Wow. Uh, by the way, we just, with that wrong answer, missed the opportunity to get the D. <laughs> that, that is true. That is true. Um, uh, yeah, and... That's, that's unfortunate. Um, all right. Uh, Amos, yes. your next one. No. I think out of the two of you, I think you are definitely the most likely to get this one right. Amos, who earned his 10th number one with the song Bad Habits? And this is, uh, I believe, the Billboard charts is where this came from. Um, the song Bad Habits was his 10th number one. Oh, I can see this dude's face. 
It's all tattooed and ugly. And everybody fucking loves him <laughs> except me. Um, I, I believe I know who you were referring to. And uh, no, it is not Post Malone. Oh, then it's got to be Bieber. <clears throat> no, also then... incorrect. It was Ed Sheeran. Yeah. Oh, ah, no, no, I wouldn't. No. Ed Sheeran died for <laughs> me like four years ago. Why? Why is everybody so down on Ed Sheeran? I really don't understand. I just don't. I haven't liked any of his new stuff. I yeah. like my my admiration for Ed Sheeran died when like the album that had uh, when, when when he was on Game of Thrones. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was about the time. Yeah, no, that was. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm I'm uh, sure that's yeah. more coincidence than uh, than causality, but oh, yeah. probably yeah. Well, and and I know I've said this before, uh, probably on this show, but I I had never I I never knew who the hell that guy was until he was on Game of Thrones and and Twitter was in an uproar about it, and I'm like, who? Uh, right. Yeah. Right. And it was because of that that I ended up realizing, oh, he did that. <laughs> hey, nice, why is everybody nice. so hating on him? I don't get it. <laughs> All right. Um, our last two questions are sports related. So, uh, Richard, I'm sure you're um, you're going to put your. Oh, yeah, uh, absolutely. <laughs> I'll put my sports ball pants on and <laughs> get at it. Uh, I'm going to wow. go to the store and look for sports ball pants. <laughs> uh, I, right. I, I think Rich you'll get very different, uh, very different options available to you, depending on which <laughs> store you go to. <laughs> Yes. All right, uh, Richard. Who won the Super Bowl this year? Wait, what? This is for me. <laughs> yes, yes. Who won the Super Bowl this year? Uh, uh um, I want to. I'm going to get this wrong. I'm going to get it wrong. I want to say Seahawks. Um, I, I appreciate so that you want to say that. I, 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 uh, I'd like to steal. <laughs> All right. What do you got, Amos? Tom Brady. <laughs> <laughs> well, I could have said that. <laughs> well, well, it wasn't his team. Yeah. It wasn't the Buccaneers. It was Tom Brady. Okay. Yes, but, but the entire team of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers did go home with a ring. Who gives a shit about the rest of the team? Like... <laughs> It was Tom Brady. Well, I mean, Gron I think it was Gr right. It was Brady and, and Gronkowski. That, no, that... no, 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 no. No, actually, the the most interesting thing about the Super Bowl was this: the first time that a team has won in their own stadium. Because the the stadiums are picked, oh yeah, the stadiums are picked several years ahead of time. So yeah, you have to have you have to happen to be in the Super Bowl. In you have to be in the Super Bowl, win the Super Bowl, and that Super Bowl happened to have occurred at your home stadium. This is the first time it's ever happened. Yeah. That's incredible. That's the most interesting fact about that Super Bowl. Um, and yes, Tom Brady is the fucking goat. I get it. But you but you want to come after me about Jordan, fucking fight me. Like, yeah. let's go. Don't even mention yeah. LeBron to mention Kobe because Kobe's higher than LeBron, so fuck off. All right, let's go. What's my question, man? All right, all right. I'm giving myself a um, ding and giving Richard a buzz on that one. All right. Your your favorite sport, baseball. Oh, fucking. Who won God, the World what? Wait, dude, what? Wait. <laughs> wait. Wait a goddamn second. <laughs> Who fucking voted you as Game Master? This is bullshit. <laughs> Have I told you lately how much I fucking hate baseball? <laughs> Oh, that that fact must have slipped my mind. Oh, you, dang it! I told you he fucking um, backloaded this shit just to piss me <laughs> off. Who won the World Series this year? I'm gonna go with the fucking Braves because it's the only team I can think of right now. <laughs> well, coincidentally, Actually, yeah, that happens. is that is the correct answer. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know the Dodgers went pretty far. The Braves. I thought the Braves won it, so I don't know. Whatever. Fucking fuck yep. all those teams. Yep. Uh, Ooh. the Atlanta Braves. Um, Amos, you have won the quiz. Of course. Two to one or three to one, depending on whose count you're going by. I would go with um, you. But you, yeah, so two to one, and which means that collectively you guys failed to get the D. Yeah. 
That's sad. So let's do this. <laughs> yeah. Actually, actually, where's, 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 shit, I don't have it. Oh, well, I guess I don't have it. We're not going to hear the fucking sad trombone because I can't find it. Okay. That's fine. Wah, wah, wah. That there was, we go. I just found it. That was really bad. No. <laughs> just as good. All right. So we're going to do our annual tradition where we go through our personal lists of of the year that was uh, where we're going to talk about our, our favorite movies, TV shows, gadgets, personal moments, uh, historical moments, um, you name it. We're going to go through the categories uh, one at a time, and we're each going to take a turn to uh, to talk about our answers. Um, Amos, let's go ahead and start with you on this. Uh, okay. Best movie is our first category. So, Amos, what, what do you think was the best movie of 2021? Um, so, I think I got the name right, but it's the new Ghostbusters movie. The it, it was, God, it was just fucking so good. It was it was well paced. It didn't seem like that long. It had enough for me as a as an old man that remembers watching the original on HBO during free weekends. And it didn't bore my uh, nine year old daughter and my six year old niece. Um, it was just fucking fun all the way around. It was so good. It was just so good. And the, the CGI okay. didn't try to do anything fucking special either. Like even the CGI was just like, well, was well layered and, and, didn't give me weird feelings about lips moving when they weren't supposed to and shit. Like it was just fucking well played. The whole the whole thing was just really good. What what uh what movie was that? Ghostbusters, the new one, Afterlife. There you go. See, you figured it out. Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> I, I I was because you didn't say the name of the movie. I, I was wondering if if I maybe made a mistake by correcting uh the name of it because what you originally put was Ghostbusters Resurrections, which. The new Matrix movie is called Matrix Resurrection. Ah, that's why it was in your head. There you go. Oh. And I thought, yeah, and I thought maybe because you didn't say the name of the movie up front and you were giving the description, I thought maybe you were talking about both movies at the same time. You thought I was trying to be coy. Mm. Yeah, and clever. No, I thought no. you were going to be clever, but no, but I'm... I should have known better. I should have yeah. known better. <laughs> no, that's that's not how that works. Yeah, um, my my favorite movie this year was Spider Man No Way Home. Um, what a fantastic film! Cool. Um, it it had the greatest mix of nostalgia without being overly fan servicey. Uh, lots of action, lots of really good plot, um, emotional feels. Um, I I really really enjoyed it. That's awesome. I really want to see that film. I am more than likely going to end up seeing that on my own TV, but mm. I'm, I'm so much looking forward to that. I think of any of the Marvel things that have come out, I am most excited about that. Yeah. I, I think I, I am very confident that you're going to enjoy it. There are only two characters that I've ever really cared about in Marvel. Um, Spider-Man and, Deadpool and Deadpool is a recent find for me as in when when they were into when Ryan Reynolds played him that's the first time I really paid attention to it to Deadpool so I'm not even like an old school Deadpool -y. Mm -hmm. um but Spider-Man is one of my favorites and I'm I'm actually like four movies behind on Spider-Man so I I can't say shit ah uh, yeah yeah well I remember Amos I remember you and I in Okinawa many 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 years ago going to see yeah. the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man. Yep. That that's still my favorite Spider-Man movie that I've seen. Um I know people have mixed feelings about the sequels, the two sequels, but I thought all three of them were fucking phenomenal and I'm not a a comic head, so I I we left that theater until we found out my van was locked in the parking lot. We left that theater <laughs> that was that night. Yeah. with me asking you how accurate that was to what you remember of the comics and, you know, having that conversation. It, it was yeah. that was it was just such a good movie. It's it's really fucking good and I, and I enjoyed the sequels both of them. So uh, Yeah. I but, I think every Spider-Man movie that that has come to date, I I've thoroughly enjoyed all of them. So the three Tobey Maguire's, the two uh, Andrew Garfield's, and then the three now the three Tom Holland's. I've I've really loved all of them. Hmm. All right, yep. so, uh, Richard, did you did you have a movie, Richard? That um, I know you haven't been to a theater this year, but uh, was there a movie that that you really liked? Yeah. So 
I haven't been to a theater. I'm I, I'm officially a germaphobe now, and really have no <laughs> desire to sit to 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 have the possibility of having to sit near somebody I don't know. Um, this year was disappointing for me for movies because other than Spider Man and the one I'm going to mention, I haven't really been really excited to see anything like nothing was just like, Oh really? That's being delayed again or all except for the one that I'm going to mention, which is the new 007 movie, no time to die. I am a huge James Bond film fan. I've read most of his original books. I haven't read other authors, James Bond books, but I've, I've loved this character. I think that uh, Daniel Craig brought something new and different to the character, br- br- like brought some, some gruff to the character that really didn't exist before. He was always so polished. And, um, you know, you have somebody who, who actually looks like they're okay getting their hands dirty and looks like they can hold their own in a fight as opposed to a lot of the guys that played this character in the past. And I think they did a really good job of ending his part in this role, like of, of giving of giving him a movie that is really worthy of what he brought to the character. And this, this uh, world that they've created in the movies with him being this character is very different from where he picked it up. And that's part of the fun of James Bond, right? Like you have a whole bunch of different Felixes and, and money penny changes and M changes. And sometimes you acknowledge it and sometimes you pretend it didn't happen and people die and then they're back again. I mean, this is just how this all works, but I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I think it was a very good film. It brought a lot of aspects of the franchise together in one really uh, good final film for him and I, I I can't wait to see what they do next with the franchise. Yeah, um, I, I'm not much of a James Bond guy myself. I, it, I feel like it's a series that I would really be into, but I, for whatever reason, it's just it's never really on my radar. I think the last James Bond movie I saw was either Goldfinger or Octopussy. <laughs> Wow. Okay. Well, so yeah, I'm Goldfinger about, like, I don't know, was four way before Octopussy. Um, <laughs> and and it, Goldfinger was probably out before you were born. Yeah, so. I think it was. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. I. I mean, I. I love these films. I think they're great. Uh, I have. I have been known to see them in the theater multiple times when they come out. So. I think this was yeah. this was worth the wait. I right on, right on. I have seen exactly zero 007 movies. <laughs> oh, I, all right. Wow. wow. You're even I, you're even worse than me. I ha- I have slightly Did you say you've seen zero zero double zero? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I wouldn't even give myself enough credit to add it at second zero. <laughs> so Yeah, no. Um all right, Richard, how about your uh, your favorite TV show this year? This is something you have had time for. Yeah. So uh, if you happen to listen to one of the other shows, I do Entertainment 2.0. This is going to be a repeat for you because we we did some best of the years from an entertainment perspective in that show. But my it, there were a, a lot of good TV shows out this year. And I tried to look at it not just in terms of shows that I've continued watching like Ted Lasso, which I think has been fantastic and continued to be great. It was my pick last year, but things that came out this year specifically. And of those, my absolute favorite 
was Mare of Easttown. It's an original miniseries on Hulu. I can never remember the actress's name. Uh, the the woman that was on that, that was a lead on Titanic, and she Kate is Winslet. Kate Winslet. She is phenomenal. This is a devastating, tragic story that is so well told, so well acted, so well written, so well directed. It takes place in what's supposed to be a neighborhood that I'm familiar with, but it, it doesn't like they're they're true to a part of a Pennsylvania town that is not the town they say they're in. Uh, but it, it's just I, I loved this so much. I watched it in two nights. It's seven hours, I believe. I believe it's seven one hour segments. It won a shit ton of Emmys and it deserved them all. Very nice. Very nice. Uh, my my favorite show of the year, and again, I, I agree with you, Richard. There's a lot of really good TV that came out this year, uh, but I I think if I had to narrow it down to one, I think I got to go with Loki, uh, the Disney Plus uh, Marvel original. Um, <clears throat> there's been several Marvel shows uh, th that have come out this year, and I've enjoyed them all, but Loki, hands down, um, it was so much fun. Uh, just, just so engaging and just like I can't I can't overuse the word fun. Yes, like every yes. moment of that show was just a joy. Yep. Uh, Tom Hiddleston as Loki is just perfection, um, and yeah, that it was it was just great. And Richard, you agree with me on that one? Totally, totally. <laughs> yeah. I, I I completely enjoyed this show. There were times when I'm like. Huh? Wait a minute. <laughs> but I, it it was so fun. That is the perfect word for this. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, it did a good job of like world building and whatnot, and like setting up future MCU stuff. And right. uh, it did it did all the things that you would want a Marvel show to do. But yeah, I, I got to go back to that word fun. Um, if if nothing else, it was just off the charts fun. The other word that I would use for it is unexpected. Like, I didn't know mm. what to expect out of this series, but it wasn't that. And <laughs> and what they gave you from a writing perspective, from a visual perspective, mm. from mm. the whole, uh, like, buddy cop story thing that they mm. had going on, it was just not at all what I expected, and I loved it. Yeah, yeah. Um, Amos, um, I'm sure you didn't see that because you're about, uh, I don't know, 20 something movies behind in the MCU. <laughs> um, what did you discover this year though? Uh, well, thank you to Kent for forcing me to watch this for an episode of ritual misery. We have yet to do, uh, but I started watching for all mankind. Holy shit. What a interesting, intriguing uh, movie. I, I'm, I'm a big fan of space. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm a big fan of alternate histories. And these are one hour episodes, 10 per season, two seasons worth, um, that feel like 15 minutes and feature length <laughs> films at the same time. And I don't know how to explain that, but it's, it's just, it's, it's amazing. Like if you're into space, or alternate histories in any way, shape, or form, go check this shit out because it rocks. Yeah, the 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 premise is that, so Earth history the same, right? All the way up until 1969, Russia landed a man on the moon before America did, and go. Yep. Yep. It's phenomenal. Um, yeah. Okay. So you've seen it as well, Richard. Yeah. I, I've only seen the first season. I oh. have not seen ah. the second season yet. So ah. oh, I, I highly I recommend plan to. I want to. I just haven't yet. Mm. Yeah. I uh, at the end of season two. Uh, Amos, have you finished season two? Mm -hmm. Per chance? You have. Okay. I I cried real tears uh, watching season two. Um, at least once, probably a couple times. 
um, the the show is not only fascinating and just generally interesting, like from a science perspective and from a um, like a what if kind of uh, perspective, but also like the drama is very well written. Yep. Uh, the, the the way the characters interact and it's, like you you actually personable. have hopes for them yeah. yeah and and sometimes like you will you might cry tears of joy when when certain characters achieve what they were trying to do um, but you're you'll also uh, cry tears of of sorrow when when they don't and when tragedy strikes and yep. uh, and and it's never quite very, very well what written. you expect so That's when right. something's yeah. going on you kind of have expectations built in. And it never quite gives you that expectation. There's always a little twist of lemon in there somewhere. And <laughs> sometimes it's a good twist yeah. and sometimes it's a bad twist. But it's never exactly what you expect. And I think that's one of the things that I really mm-hmm. enjoyed about it and why I binged 19 episodes in four days and then held off for a couple of days before finally finishing the, the 20th episode. <laughs> Yeah, I I, I and, saw where it was going, and I wasn't quite ready for it in case there was another twist. Yeah. and there fucking <laughs> was, of course. So I'm glad yeah. I, I'm because I'm glad I allowed myself time to process that one individually. Right, cool. right, yeah, right on. Amos, what was your what was your favorite gadget of the year? I couldn't pick one, but I picked two that I purchased on the same day, so I think that counts. Um. I'm going to start with the smaller of the two, the HomePod Mini. I had given up on home speakers sound quality. I thought they were all going to be shit. And I got to tell you, the HomePod Mini sounds fucking fabulous for this room. It's actually sitting right there. Um, yeah, it's it's perfect for a single room. I don't know how it, how it sound in like a you know, larger environment. Um, I have two HomePods as a stereo pair in the living room, and they're really bassy. They 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 sound like kind of like Beats headphones, but with the bass turned up a little bit higher than that. And mm-hmm. it's not quite comfortable, although it does really add a lot when you're watching movies and stuff like that. You're streaming from the Apple TV, uh, and and you're using those as your speakers. Uh, it works out pretty well. It gives you a lot of bass for like explosions and shit. But just for a single room, this HomePod Mini is fucking phenomenal. Great sound quality. It gets loud enough. Uh, it's responsive. So even if it's blaring music, you say the keyword and it's like, oh, yeah, I heard you. What you want? Um, <laughs> and the other thing was the M1 Mac Mini. I bought my 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 satellite office Mac Mini for the one down at uh, my wife's place in Washington. On the same day, I bought the HomePod Mini. Phenomenal machine. And then I came up back up here to alaska and i bought the same machine with a bigger ssd and the double the ram and i haven't looked back and it's it's been fucking phenomenal um it's it's every it's my daily driver now my windows machine is delegated to the smaller screen off to the side over here which is currently running sim airport um and yeah making money over there um so yeah, that's uh, th- those are my two items. Uh, th- again, they're just it, fucking phenomenal. Both of them surprise hits out of the gate. So, very happy with them. How about you, Kent? Right on. Yeah. So last year I went with the uh, Legends Ultimate Arcade, um, and this year I'm going with another toy. Uh, got myself the Oculus Quest Two. It's my first like real jump into the VR space, and oh my god. Um, probably the best $300 I ever spent. Uh, that thing is freaking phenomenal. Uh, now it is a, uh, self, like a self-contained device. You don't actually hook it to a PC, um, which uh, accounts for its like lower graphics quality, um, which is fine by me because being a, a newbie to the VR space, I don't need my graphics to be photorealistic yet. <laughs> um, and, but, uh, and being, but a, actually... being a Mac user, you wouldn't be able to push anything to, to into it anyway. <laughs> well, right, yeah. I mean, that, and that's another thing. I mean, I would be, I would have to get a PC to really run uh, a quality VR rig. Um, yeah. But, uh, but yeah, but that's actually one of the one of the pluses of the Oculus Quest Two is that you don't have wires dangling off you. You're not you're not tethered. 
mm-hmm. um, you know, you're not, you're not leashed to anything. Um, so, but uh, yeah, I've been having a blast with that thing. I've, I've watched movies in it, uh, just like on prime video or, or YouTube or what have you. And it's literally like sitting in a movie theater all by yourself. It's freaking awesome. Uh, played several games, uh, just various, just VR experiences. It is, it is absolutely a blast and just a fascinating space to, to exist in. Uh, but I'm having a lot of fun with that. But Kent, how's the porn? Hey, allegedly it's it's um, insane. <laughs> <laughs> allegedly, <laughs> Richard, have you have you gotten into the VR space at all? Uh, no, I have not. And it, it's funny because. In, as one of the things that I'm doing as we are moving, I've gotten into uh, back into SketchUp to model the house that we're moving into. And I desperately wish that I had the ability to virtually walk around in that. And, and SketchUp ha- does support that, but I don't have any hardware that would allow me to uh, create something that I could do that with. So I'm, I'm really, I'm, I'm curious, but I, at the same time, I'm one of these people, uh, one of the many people who has depth perception issues. Mm. And mm-hmm. So my eyes don't, uh, my eyes don't actually align. And so they don't focus together. And as a result, it's really hard to see anything with like two screens right up in front of me. I end up, one of them, I end up just kind of ignoring. So the 3D aspect of it would be lost on me entirely. It's just more for that kind of spatial immersion that I'd be interested in in, uh, playing around with that some more. Yeah, right on. What was your, what was your gadget of the year? So I'm torn because the thing that I really like the most this year is once again, my new iPhone is the new iPhone mini and specifically the mini. Like I I was not going to get a new phone this year if they didn't come out with another mini. Mm. And I'm so happy that they did because it's the perfect size for me. I'm a fairly small guy and the larger phones just end up being uncomfortable in my pocket or too heavy or yeah, you have like the monster size one, right? As uh, Amos is showing there. I, I I like to have the smaller size phones for my hand just for, for, for pocketability and Man, the cameras on these things, every single time you don't think that they're going to be able to make the cameras better. And the cameras are just phenomenal on this thing. I, uh, so I have two points. Oh, okay. Two points. One, okay. My nine year old, her big Christmas present this year was an iPhone 13 mini. Okay. Uh, Really more from my peace of mind of her being in a school where a lot of people have guns in this area. Um, but <clears throat> so I finally got to use a 13 mini, you know, well, a mini, and I got to tell you that thing, there's zero chance I would be able to use that on a regular basis. How the hell did I ever use the four, the iPhone four? I don't know. Um, <laughs> so the mini is just entirely too small. However, I will give you a point on the cameras. I got the 12 earlier this year because we switched to T-Mobile because Verizon didn't have any reception where my wife lives only to find out that T-Mobile doesn't have reception up here where I live. So um, I ended up switching back to Verizon, in which case, oh, he's got his iPhone 4 from forever ago. Um, <laughs> Compared to the new yeah. uh, Pro Max, I'm assuming? No, just No, this is the 13 Pro. Yeah, That's just the Pro. Yeah. That's just the Pro. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, see, way um, too big. Way, 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 way. Too I uh, switched back to Verizon and it ended up getting the 13 Pro Max because that's, that's you know, I, I'm, I like my bigger phone. 
Um, yes, the iPad, the iPad Mini you just showed, right? No, <laughs> no, it's the iPad, it's the I- iPad mi- Micro. Um, <laughs> yeah. but I hadn't really used the camera very much because I have professional gear, and I just just right. always assumed that I'm just going to use that uh, for anything other than just a quick snapshot. And then the other night we were clearing the driveway out off from snow, and my wife and my oldest started making us a, a a very pregnant. Bootylicious snow woman. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> it, my wife started making boobs, and then my daughter started making a butt, and then they ended up deciding that she was also pregnant. So they made like. The, anyway, I took pictures of them out there with the snowman, you know, doing the night mode and stuff like that. Phenomenal fucking pictures. Yep. It was ridiculous how good the camera is, and I was absolutely surprised. Because I have shaky hands. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to take a night picture. It doesn't right. work out very well. Mm-hmm. No, it, it fucking it made it work. And the pictures look great. And they're actually pretty well lit. And, and it wasn't a very bright light out there at 1 o'clock in the morning. So It's um, amazing. Yeah, I'm, I'm really, really happy with it. Yeah, and that's coming from a semi-professional photographer. Right. So, yeah. Um, okay, well, let's move on to personal moment of the year. Uh, Richard, what stands out to you for 2021? Well, let's see. I spent about maybe a third of my year in North Carolina. And part of that was to just get the hell out of this house. <laughs> and then while we were down there, we're like, wow, you know, it's really nice down here. We come down here all the time. There's some houses for sale down here. Maybe we should look at some houses. And we started doing some math and learning more about the rental market down there and figured out that we could make a rental property work so that basically we'd have a vacation home that paid for itself. And we bought a vacation rental home. So I'm now a landlord and that's interesting because I've never done anything like that before, but it's been really cool. It's taken a lot of my time this year. It's yet another reason that I haven't been able to do other stuff, which I'll talk about later. But I, I, I now understand like this obsession that, Maybe like Airbnb and VRBO, VRB, VRBO owners have to try and create these great places for their guests and, uh, you know, trying to get more properties that they can make available because I have the bug now. Mm. And <laughs> I think maybe, maybe we found our retirement business. Not sure, but uh, a really good candidate. So a, a lot of the reason that I was down there so long was to to close on the place and to then get the place ready and just uh, stuff like that. And we actually got to vacation there, too, which was fun. Nice. Uh, should we call you Lord Richard now? Yeah, no, don't do that. <laughs> OK. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Lord Richard just goes into big dick and that's just that's not gonna work for any of us. Oh, oh wow geez. wow that 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 went somewhere <laughs> um my my uh standout moment of the year uh personally was was being able to take my youngest son to an nba game hmm. uh he is a gigantic fan of the golden state warriors and uh primarily steph curry um he huge fan of steph curry and they were playing in Phoenix uh, about a month ago, and we went out there to the game, and it was such a blast. Not only both of us going to our first NBA game, uh, but just to spend three days with my son, um, just the two of us, it was just an absolute blast. I, I, I value that that three days like to uh, to such a degree that that that's that's absolutely my standout. Mm. of the year really cool i went a different direction and i called it in here the nine to four and a half (laughs) yeah i was wondering like what could he be talking about so two years ago we had nine people living in this house it was crowded we have a big house it was fucking (laughs) crowded um and this year we went from seven which is seven plus two occasionals to just four of us with 
uh, my niece coming for the weekends. So from nine people to four and a half. And I got to say, man, like that changed. It changed a lot. It changed a fucking lot. Um, house used to be too full. Now it's fucking, it's a de- deserted town. You know, we, we have like, like, uh, 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 fucking tumbleweeds rolling through the living room and shit. Like there's never anybody around, you know, you got to find somebody. You just need, you need, you just need a hand with something real quick. It takes you like an hour and a half just to find someone in this goddamn house. Um, it, it's just, it's, it's for me, for being an only child and a, a latchkey kid and having like the entire place to myself, most of the time that I was growing up, um, I didn't realize how used to having a large family I had gotten until the family was literally cut in half. And um, gotta say, a lot of changes. Um, it's been a lot of stress on my wife and I's relationship. It's been a lot of stress on the kids, uh, three of which are going through college. Um, yeah, it's been it's been interesting. It's been a hell of a year, which is another reason why we haven't had so many episodes this year is because. I've been out. I've been out of state for a couple months here and there. Uh, I'm going back down to Washington to help set up the house, and then just getting the hell out of this house for a little while. All the things. So yeah, uh, that was my big, my big moment this year. Um, can't say it was a good mm-hmm. one, but I mean, not necessarily a bad one either, because you know, like you know, bad things happened. It's just it's been it's been tough. Yeah, yeah. Well, you'll yeah, you're making it work. And um, it'll work out for sure. Um, okay, well, let's move on, Amos. Let's change this, the topic then. And uh, what was, uh, for you, what was the most thought-provoking science story of the year? All right, so going from a big house full of people to a big house devoid of people to an entirely new planet, completely devoid of sentient life. Um, the perseverance, allegedly, yeah, allegedly. well, allegedly. We, we haven't found it yet. So, um, the perseverance lander being on Mars and just the, the photographs we've gotten from that, some of the science we've gotten from that, that it's that that's exciting. That's really fucking exciting. Um, super psyched just about Mars in general and the, the latest rover this uh this perseverance lander is yeah i i some of the pictures it's really just about the pictures for me um because the science is all gobbledygook that i'm gonna have to wait for youtube to explain anyway uh, <laughs> but uh yeah just it's just re- remarkable and the fact that it was the first of three landers from three different nations that landed this year um just god so much science is coming out of that man i'm so excited Would- would would you go to Mars? You personally? Were I the only surviving member of my family? Yes. Mm. Yep. I when I was a kid, my my dream was to be the first person on Mars. I wanted to be basically Neil Armstrong, but from Mars. Wow. And uh, that that guided a lot of my um, decisions. And I don't think I would be in the Air Force now, or you know, whatever. I don't think I would have joined the Air Force if my childhood dream wasn't uh, to go to Mars. Hmm. Uh, obviously, mm-hmm. my path diverged, and that's, like, not even an option at this point. But I, I don't know I don't know that I would go to Mars at this point. I Like, if, if that chance was given to me right now, I'd really have to think about it. Hmm. Uh, but rewind the clock, you know, 25, 30 years or whatever, like, there's – it wouldn't even be a question – I would have said yes before you even finished the the question. <laughs> yeah, um, now you have yeah, now you have kids. <laughs> yeah, like people <laughs> like count on me and stuff. It's crazy. Um, I don't know, R- Richard. Would you go to Mars? I think when I was younger, I would have considered it. I, as a younger person, before the Challenger accident, mm. fully expected to fly in space someday Mm. like i just assumed that Mm. everybody would be able to do that by the time i was grown up newsflash richard those tickets are expensive so you're gonna have to have a lot more vrbos right 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 exactly (laughs) so i uh I, i i don't expect to ever do that in my lifetime but i seriously 
from the day of that accident, that's that was in my like the personal revelation to me was at that day was uh, well I'm never getting to space now. Mm-hmm. Like I just knew that that was going to set everything back by by yeah. at least a generation. Years. Yeah. It was so, yeah, that was my reality check as well because I was certain that I was going to be an astronaut. Like that that you couldn't have told me different. Uh, until yeah. that fateful day in what 1986, I think. Yes. Um, March 86. Yep. Yeah, that was like, ooh, I ooh, I maybe, had a I had a revelation not. that day as well, <laughs> but it had nothing to do with space. Oh, oh, okay. I've told this story before, but I won the school spelling bee, so our class got to go to the library <laughs> to watch the Challenger launch. Yes, you had told. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah. that was the day I realized that yes. even when I do good, I'm gonna disappoint. Oh, <laughs> oh, damn it! Talk about thought, talk about you know, something that frames your mindset for life. <laughs> God damn! Jeez. All right. Well, <laughs> the uh, the thought provoking science story for me uh, this year was we we as in humanity uh, we now have a malaria vaccine. Um, it is not a. Uh, it's not a miracle drug. It's not. Um, it, it's not effective against all forms of malaria, and the form, the form that it is effective against, is the uh, deadliest form of malaria. But even then, it's only something like thirty-six percent, I think, uh, effective. Um, so it's again, it's not a miracle drug, or, or well, I I do think it's a miracle drug. But it's not a it's not a cure all like malaria is gone now we did it, um, but we are well on our way to uh, uh, to getting rid of malaria and a lot of infectious diseases. Like last year, we talked a lot about the mRNA vaccine uh, coming into being, and uh, this year, I, you know, the three of us have been vaccinated, and I, I think most of our listeners have been vaccinated as well. Like that is a that is a thing that came together very quickly. Well, at least for for the COVID vaccine, uh, the mRNA technology has been uh, a thing, um, uh, like I, I, I don't know, a thing that's been in the works for in the for works many for years like a decade. Point. Yeah, yeah, long time. Um, it, it, and, if it um, weren't for like if, our, it, if it weren't for the coronavirus being so similar to other coronaviruses or viri, viri. The, COVID, COVID, you're saying uh, COVID-19 is so similar to other coronaviruses, like right. the common cold. Right. And, if yeah. it hadn't been the fact yeah. that we had already studied other variants of the, that genealogy um, as much as we had and had not been at a, the right place at with our mRNA at that time, we still wouldn't have a fucking vaccine. So, oh, um, no, abs- well, uh, maybe because like J&J isn't mRNA based. Uh, right. And J- J- J&J but... is currently not being distributed in a lot of places because of issues. <laughs> well, true, true. But but my point is our, our vaccine technology just as a science uh, yeah. has has advanced to a point where uh, some of the, the biggest things that kill humans every single year uh, were really, really close uh, to that, to that just being a, a thing in the past. One of the things that I loved about the lore of Star Trek is the fact that, like, common diseases just don't fucking exist anymore because we've right. just figured out a way to just not be affected by that shit. And uh, I think we're like we're on the path. You know, I mean, it's not going to happen in 2022 or even 2025 or whatever. But like, we're on that path. Uh, that's that's going to happen. We're we're going to eradicate infectious disease and. Uh, the malaria vaccine existing uh, to me is just, that's proof of that. That's yeah, amazing. that's pretty, pretty exciting, but I don't, I still don't know how to eradicate Republicans. Uh, <laughs> oh, 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 Jesus. <laughs> wow. R- R- Richard, okay. what, 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 uh, what was your thought provoking science story? Cause so... you, you kind of blended uh, my second one with Kent's first one. Uh, or second one, or you kind of kind of met in the middle between them. Yeah. So <laughs> my thought-provoking science story is the the finally the the long-awaited launch of the James Webb Space T- 
telescope. So the, um, fucking excited. Unfortunately named. The unfortunately named. Uh, go ahead. Sorry. The unfortunately named. Uh, what am I missing? Anyway. The, the JWST. Yeah. Okay. J- James, James Webb's a problematic uh, figure. Uh, but well, the, the so telescope is named it. I call it the web. I, I, I've always referred this to this as the Webb telescope. And uh, not everybody knows who he was. It's kind of irrelevant. The point is. Yep. I, agree. I agree. That we now have a telescope in space. It is not fully deployed yet. Mm. It is in the process of unfolding literally as it heads out toward its, let's call it an orbit, but it is finally something that is on par with, but actually much better than Hubble. It's got to work. The first time out, because there there ain't no repair in this thing, so hopefully they got it all right, and they had plenty of time to do that. As a matter of fact, because they've been planning this since the nineties, <laughs> yes, yep. and spent about nine billion dollars more on it than they anticipated spending. Yep. But it, it, this this is going to give space agencies the ability and i say agencies because this is a joint venture between 20 different countries yep between the canadian space agency european space agency and nasa and it's going to give our agencies the ability to look back at they believe some of the first stars that came to exist after the big bang it is going to give them ability to see things they've never been able to see with the spectral photography that they could do before. So this to me, I think is so exciting. I remember at South by one year, NASA at the NASA exhibit had a full scale model of this thing sitting Mm. out on the lawn. Oh, wow. You could go and like walk around and they were, they had all this education stuff about it. So you could learn about it. You know, this is back when they thought they were going to launch it. Well, I mean, they thought they were going to launch it initially, I believe in 2003 or something like that. This has been a long time coming, but I'm so excited about it. This is yeah, really cool stuff. So yeah, a couple things. One, a lot of people call this the Hubble 2.0. It's actually, if you're going to go along those lines, it's the Hubble 3.0 because there was another telescope or the, the space telescope that went out there that's, that basically enhanced uh, uh, Hubble's usability into the ultraviolet, whereas Hubble primarily focuses on visible light. It's just non-atmospheric visible light. So it can see better and it can focus farther uh, than the stuff we have on the ground because of being in space and in the shape of it. There's another one I forget what it was, but it basically focused more on the 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 ultraviolet, um, which wasn't. I mean, I'm sure it was useful to a lot of people, but it wasn't the useful the way that Richard and I would talk about it. Um, this one, the JWST, it focuses far, much, much farther into the red spectrum, so the infrared. Uh, spectrometry, spectrometry, spectro, spectrometry. There we go. <laughs> no, keep going. Fuck. Keep going. Fuck. Um, <laughs> the, uh, the the but the way in in the the thing the one thing that really kicks me about it, I get it. You're looking further into the infrared, and you're gonna be able to see further back. Red shift and stuff is gonna pop out to you. Whatever. Cool, cool. They're placing it at the Lagrange point which is this mathematical model of a place where it'll maintain an orbit outside of the earth. So it'll always be basically around the edge of the earth's shadow away from the sun um, and circling and following the earth as it moves around the sun. It's mathematically possible, but we've never tried it before. If they made one wrong uh, uh, you know, added a decimal point somewhere, or whatever else, this thing's going to get out there just to right around 980 million or 980,000 miles away from Earth, try to go into its little orbit, 
either use up all his fuel trying to stay in that orbit or just go flying off into fucking nowhere land. There's no fixing it. There's no anything. This is four times farther than the fucking moon. Um, and if the Lagrange point actually works, we kind of only have one shot at it because once you put something in that orbit, there's not a whole lot else that can occupy that particular orbit because the math is just so fucking precise. So hopefully it works out really well. It's not supposed to get there for another, what, five weeks, I think, is when it arrives. Um, six weeks total. It launched about a week ago. So that's going to be really fucking exciting. And you know I'm going to talk about it right here uh, sometime in February. It's that's that's going to fucking... That, that's, dude, they put a lot, of, a lot of fucking faith in the math and just hope shit works because holy yeah. damn. Yeah, and we're, we're quite going to be lot talking of... about a lot of space stuff in february so yeah <laughs> uh, go ahead go ahead richard i was gonna say quite a lot of this actually happened uh uh you know in, in my backyard if you will quite a lot of this happened in uh at goddard space center in maryland outside of dc mm-hmm. and so that's also very exciting too because i know people that work at goddard and you know you don't really hear a lot about stuff that comes out of Goddard. Goddard isn't one of the the glamorous uh, uh, offices or or space centers at NASA. It's I mean, one it's no, where they're, it's no Kennedy. There, it's one where they're doing all. Of the, <laughs> they're no they're Johnson, making the right? stuff that goes out, and they're doing all the science to make the stuff that goes out. So. Yeah. It, it's it's very cool. Yeah, it's named after Robert H. Goddard, the father of modern rocketry. Cool. <laughs> I, I just, did not I know that. Point that out. I always got to point that out because when I was in fifth or sixth grade, I did a report on Robert Goddard, and uh, he's just like just I, I cannot shake that knowledge. So, wow. Anyway, yep. uh, in fifth, <laughs> fifth grade, I did a report on Marquis de Lafayette, only to find out that later in, lo- later in life that most of what the history books were telling me at the time were dumbed down versions for fucking elementary school kids that didn't actually include half of his actual accomplishments and might have embellished some of the others. So none of my knowledge base for my fifth grade report is actually valid. <laughs> well, I still have confidence in my Goddard report. But, uh... <laughs> 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 Good for you, Richard. <laughs> Richard, we're going to move on to the most WTF moment of 2021. Uh, what what stuck out to you? Uh, what 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 did you look at and be like, what the fuck? Right. Um, this one to me baffles me. the The fact that we have vaccines to help people from getting sick or dying Mm -hmm, from mm -hmm. COVID Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and such a significant number of people are unwilling to get those vaccines Mm -hmm. and then look at the population and largely the people that are, let me say this differently, a, significant number of Republicans compared to Democrats are not getting vaccinated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why? Why is this political? Why in any way is this political? And the, and that's not even the, what the fuck moment, the, what the fuck moment is that it's because of stuff that Trump put into motion and Project Warp Speed and the government and the agencies involved in this process that took all of the risk to allow companies to do stuff in parallel instead of in series, that is a big reason why we have, why this was as successful as it was and we have as much of it as we do as quickly as we got it. And that came out of the Trump administration. And yet it is largely the followers of Trump as best Trump we can actually, tell from the data at, that at we, his that are not getting the vaccine. 
Right. At, at his rallies now, he will mention that he's vaccinated and he gets booed right. by his own people. Right. Yeah, it's right. it is. I, I just I, what? How does this make any sense? The monster he created has actually be, like turned on him. The Like the monster that it's, he's created has has grown bigger than him now. It's the the yeah. what is it, oh, the Mobius yeah. snake or whatever that shit's called, eating its own tail. Yeah, the snake eats its own tail. Uh, yeah, and 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 I think honestly, I think Trump years ago lost control of his of his own base, um, uh, with with the uh, pro- proliferation of QAnon and all that sort of stuff. Like I I think it's gotten far outside of Trump's direct control. Yeah, uh, I. Yeah. I, I think the moment that it turned was when he was hospitalized for COVID. You think that was the? I that think was that the was point? the impetus to the yeah. to the the downfall of of uh, positive uh, influence on the Republican Party. Because um, mm. once that happened, and he got all those drugs and everything else, and then he came out and was saying that it, oh, it's no big thing, and then he also tried to come out and say uh, this big project is is great and it, it just it is like there was too much there you had to draw a line you had to decide if he was full of shit or if you were stupid and everyone decided he was full of shit um mm. but but a lot of people that were previous followers of his uh fell on the he's a piece of shit and I'm fucking stupid and they went down a different path <laughs> than than some well, of the others well yeah and but I think this is, I think it's selective, um, I don't know what you call it, selective reasoning, selective, um, I, I don't know. Because, like, people will still say that they follow Trump. Like, they, they like he's still their hero. Um, yet, they disagree with things that he has said. Or, you know, like, like the vaccine example. Like, they'll be completely against that. Yet, if you like, well, but you're, you know, your guy your guy got it. They'll be like, well, well, you know, and then they've got some justification handy. Um, so they're all exactly like AOC followers just on the other side of the political divide on the other side. Yeah. The other side. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) And and, you know, and this, this leads me directly to Amos, you and I'm just going to go ahead and start this one. Um, you and I both, both put this as our WTF moment. This is the, 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 the riot on January 6th at the Capitol. Uh, some folks call it an insurrection, uh, some some folks uh, will would disagree with that uh, characterization. I'm somewhere in the middle. I get both sides of why it was or was not an insurrection. However, um, that was d- directly caused by uh, um, doctrine that kind of got out of control. Um, uh, you know, Trump saying some things and whipping a, a basically a, a mob into a frenzy uh, mixed with. Uh, QAnon rhetoric and uh, all sorts of factors uh, converged all at the exact same time in the same place, which unfortunately was like five blocks away from the U.S. Capitol. Um, And uh, then we had that incident, which I I saw this happening. I I got a um, a push notification on my phone from a, a news I don't know if it was just generically from Apple news or if it was Reuters push, or I, I'm not sure which, which uh, organization pushed it to me, but um, that the, the U S Capitol has been breached by protesters. And I was like, what? Like, like two or three folks, I'm sure like, you know, a couple of people got, you know, broke into a side door or something. Uh, and then like 20 minutes later, it was, uh, I don't remember what the, the headline said, but it was basically like, you know, the, the Capitol is being overrun and, uh, uh, representatives are being evacuated from the building. Uh, 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 some, something about the national guard is, is being deployed. You know, I was like, Oh my fucking God. I thought, I thought the Capitol was going to be burned to the ground. Um, it was, a, a easily the most, what the fuck moment for me. Part of that was what the fuck is actually happening? Because, you know, I wasn't watching the news or anything like that. I had to like seek, seek out like photographic evidence. And when I saw that first picture of thousands of people on the steps of the Capitol, I, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. 
that did not look real to me. And then it just got more and more surreal as the day went on. Um, yeah, I don't even, that's, yeah, that's, that's Amos, uh, Richard, <laughs> uh, anything to add to that? Uh, um, if if he's able to speak, I want him to speak first because I have a different perspective. Mm. While I am interested to hear Richard's perspective <laughs> being as close to the action as he lives, uh, now would be a good time for me to state that my opinions are my own and that I do not agree <laughs> with those opinions, represent any other entity... To include my to own include el- the ritual misery, to include the ritual misery podcast. <laughs> no, I'm fine representing the ritual misery podcast. I'm talking about, <laughs> I'm talking about you know, real shows that I that I work with and for. Mm. Um, oh, gotcha, gotcha. What happened on January sixth was an embarrassment of embarrassments. Yeah, it wasn't a protest. It wasn't a riot. It was a, let me correct that. It was an armed insurrection and revolt against the United States government. There are no qualms about what I'm about to say. That every person that breached the Capitol deserves to be in jail for a very, very long time. That... Every person that supported those people deserves to be in jail for a very, very long time. That each and every one of them is reading, if they've read it at all, which I (laughs) extensively doubt, (laughs) they are reading a very different constitution than than the one that I swore to uphold and, and defend. Um... There is my only regret about that entire situation being that I watched it. Uh, I, I was glued. I mean, I was still glued to my fucking TV after, after the election at that point, I saw things happening. I knew he was having that rally. I was watching the news coverage of the rally. I was watching the news coverage of the March to the Capitol. And I watched the entire fucking insurrection on live TV. The only thing I regret about that, and I understand there was loss of life uh, from the people defending the Capitol and things like that. The only regret I have about it is that more of the insurrectionists were not put down and out of my misery. And that the people in charge of protecting the Capitol who failed either out of ignorance out of um inability to lead or out of misguided trust were were not and will not be held accountable and hung from the fucking yard in front of the in front of the white house um for their failures and their complete ineptitude in handling a situation that literally anyone who was watching and paying attention saw fucking coming. And that includes anyone currently or previously serving in any public office that supported or defended or continues to defend the insurrectionists and anyone in charge of the agencies, including the Department of Defense, that withheld support withheld intelligence or simply didn't provide timely responses to what amounted to a massive fucking situation. I think all of them should be in the fucking yard hanging from Oak. And that I I don't have zero qualms. Like I'd fucking do it myself if I had the legal authority to do so. I don't care. I'm fucking done with it. I'm tired of the shit. And Kent, you know, for the last several years, I've had very little faith in our government. Um, 
but I hold true faith to the fucking Constitution. And those that violate it have zero fucking empathy coming from me. Don't give a shit. This, they, they should all fucking... They should all be hanging from 13 knots. <laughs> Richard? Jesus. All right. What Richard, do you got? What's your... <laughs> that, that was a... Wow. That was so incredibly well thought out and structured. I don't know how to follow that. But my take on this is that this wasn't my most what the fuck moment this is what i'm going to name as my most historic event of this year and i call it an insurrection and it's not a what the fuck moment for me by any means because as you just said i fully anticipated this I frankly expected it to be much worse. I did not want to be in the DC area on January 6th. It's one of the big reasons that I was not in the state and that we were in North Carolina for the month of January, because I did not want to be anywhere near this city on January 6th. Mm. So I was not surprised. I fully expected it. I'm shocked by what you were saying earlier. This whole, I like the fact that the, the failure of imagination to think that this could happen or to be prepared for something like this just boggles the mind. And if we see Trump and his cadre of uh, of uh, not supporters but but also instigators, like all these people that were riling everybody up, his thinking that there was thinking thinking that there was no consequence to it. And then suddenly when it gets bad, they're like, oh, my God. Meanwhile, he's supposedly sitting there enjoying every minute of it. What were they thinking? Everybody involved in this, in, in getting people to this level, I think, needs to pay a severe price for it. And I think that needs to be a legal and penal cost to people that you normally wouldn't consider dealing with that way, including and up to Donald Trump himself. Yard arm. I'm telling you. <laughs> Fucking yard arm for all of yeah. them. <clears throat> historic event <clears throat> historic event of the year for me was the end of the Afghanistan war. Um to me this is something that is long, long overdue. It's something that more or less defined my Air Force career, the Afghanistan war. Mm. Uh, it's about fucking time that it's over. I know a lot of veterans have at best mixed feelings, um, but at, at worst, uh, really heartbroken, upset feelings about how it ended uh, with the immediate take over by the Taliban and so forth. Um, one day I will share with everyone my feelings on this. My take is different than a lot of my um, brothers in arms. Uh, but anyway, I'm not going to get into that. Uh, the fact that, that the United States is, well, at least primarily out of Afghanistan, that that war is no longer uh, uh, being fought by American uh, individuals is again long, long fucking overdue, and I am so glad that 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 chapter of, of American history is done. Yep. Uh, you, for context, you did serve in Afghanistan, whereas I did not. So mm. there's I did. Yep. There, there's there's a little bit different perspective there. So I will not try to speak for you in any way, shape, or form about that. Oh, no, no, no. Your opinions are your own. You made that clear earlier. Um, <laughs> I, uh, 
I, I I know a lot of people that were there and they're sad to see the sacrifices of many service members um, so harshly tossed out. Um, and I don't know where the balance is between that and just not being there anymore. Uh, I don't think we found it, but I don't know what the balance would have been. Um, I think the result was kind of inevitable, which is one of the reasons I'm glad I never went there. Um, but uh, on the positive side, at least 20 years of women in Afghanistan had some semblance of liberty. And uh, that's something that, that would not have happened otherwise. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's a harsh situation that, that just sucks all around. I don't, I, don't, I don't think there was a good way. I don't think we took the best of the bad ways. But I'm not one to speak on what the best of those bad ways would have been. So, yeah, I, I think I'm actually going to write, I'm going to write my opinion and then probably read it, uh, in an audio recording, um, at some point, I'm not ready yet to do that, but, um, cause I've got some, I've got some real, <laughs> some deep, deep thoughts about it. Um, yeah. but anyway, that, so maybe at some point in 2022, <laughs> you guys can expect that. If we, did you have 22. a perspective on that? Yeah. Did you did you have any perspective on on that, Richard? It's hard for me to have a perspective, not having had any involvement and really only watched it on TV. Um, I I know very few people personally that served because I don't have uh, among the circle of people that I hang out with regularly, not a lot of military people. Um, most of my, <laughs> I have a lot of government contacts, mostly civilian. And I think my biggest concern coming out of that and, and actually the same was true with Iraq and anywhere else where we had people where some may argue we shouldn't have, but, um, you know, we had a lot of people spending a lot of time and, and, um, committing their lives to is that everybody gets the deserved respect for the time that they put there. Um, I still remember my great uncle, I believe he was, coming home from Vietnam. And it was, it was, it was one of those things that you didn't talk about like because people were coming home in shame from Vietnam, which is just unfathomable to me. Like, I don't know how as a country we allowed that to happen. And I so I'm glad to see that. Most of what I've seen, most reactions that I've seen toward the veterans that served there have an and active military um, that are still active that have served there has been positive, and I just hope we always remember it that way. Yeah, right on, uh, Amos. Your uh, historic event looks like it's the James Webb Space Telescope. Is that right? And I think we already covered that. Um, I just want to say that the reason I put that as my historic event was instead of my um, my science. Um, was because we have to make a choice to look forward. And when it comes to history, this last year has been such fucking shit. Most of it completely forgettable, to be honest with you. <laughs> um, and then the few memories outside of my my family, like the few national stage and um, uh, political memories that I have of the year were all just complete crap. Um Ghislaine Maxwell being convicted on five of six charges today was probably the political highlight. Uh, and that, and that's only ho because I hope it brings other people down with, with her. Um, yeah, I, I just want to look forward instead of looking back for, uh, for a lot of things for history. And I think the James Webb space telescope is going to bring a lot of science that is going to be completely fucking fascinating that they're going to be teaching for years. Um, it's so much more capable than the Hubble, uh, is slash was, 
and in a completely farther reaching perspective. So, uh, yeah, James O's Space Telescope for the fucking win, man. Let's, I hope this, hope, hope we're, hopefully we're talking about good shit in February when it's fully, uh, fully stretched yeah. out its wings and in its, uh, Lagrange point successfully. Yeah, absolutely. So let's, that brings us to our, our final, uh, topic of our 2021 review personal podcast. Interesting milestone. Amos, uh, let's go ahead and wrap up with you first. Sub brilliant or no, no, I won't, won't, re- won't read it for you. Your personal <laughs> podcasting milestone. What, what, what stood out to you personally as a podcaster? Uh, picking up a contract with uh, Sub brilliant LLC as an associate producer. It's uh means I'm working with Tom Merritt on a regular basis, doing all sorts of, uh, work behind the scenes. It's, um, really exciting i am the other half of roger chang really because roger is kind of the front facing producer and i do a lot of the stuff in the background that he either doesn't have time for or just doesn't want to do and i do a lot of editing and things like that and it's it's uh for for my so, first podcast so are you say are you are you saying that roger's your better half uh no roger's my <laughs> senior producer uh <laughs> <clears throat> I, I I I will not speak uh, poorly or uh, highly <laughs> of any current or uh, potential uh, uh, senior managers on whatever chain <laughs> I am on. Um, All right. No, it's it's just been really exciting. It's it's been a lot of fun working with Tom and working with uh, with Sarah and Roger and and Joe and just being. I I, I still feel uh, imposter syndrome every time I'm on the show, uh, working on anything. And yet, somehow, even through all my weird remarks and my bad ideas, they still uh, laugh at my jokes and, and welcome me to the to the crew. So uh, it's kind of they're the, so kind. It, they're so kind. It, I'm I, I'm a fucking charity case, I tell you. And uh, I'm I'm glad to be the recipient of whatever charity they give. So uh, that's that's my personal one. What about you, Kent? Um. Yeah. So ritual misery has um, kind of. I guess taking a bit of a back seat this year for, for me and you um, in the, in the sense that we've, we've produced way fewer shows this year uh, than we have really since we, since we started this whole venture together. Um, and it's not because uh, RMP is less important to us or because it's, um, you know, just that we don't care or any of that sort of stuff. Um, it's just that a lot of life has been going on and, um, it, it's just harder and harder these days uh, to find the time. So we scaled back significantly, especially in the second half of the year. Uh, but one thing that we absolutely did not scale back our efforts on is the New Year's Eve streamathon. Uh, out of everything, I, th- I think a lot of positive things have come out of the existence of Ritual Misery Podcast. And out of all of those things, to me, the, the most significant and uh, the thing that's most near and dear is the New Year's Eve streamathon. Uh, for a lot of reasons. And every year it's grown, not only in audience size and in uh, donations earned and things like that. It's also gained in, in reputation, in notoriety. More and more people are paying attention. More people, uh, more people in the podcasting space, in the streamer space, know of the of the Diamond Club New Year's Eve Streamathon's existence and want to contribute. And every single year it's getting bigger and bigger. And this year it is like it's like we're close to this thing becoming a monster where we're gonna have to auction off uh slots for the streamathon. Um it's becoming huge and yep. we're getting a higher number of more prolific streamers uh, each time we do this and, um, it's just been, it's been wonderful to, uh, you know, definitely to be a part of it, but, but part of me feels like I'm, I'm kind of just sitting back watching it occur, uh, much, much like I do for the 27 hour stream, <laughs> sit back and watch it happen. Um, but, but yeah, so what I put in my column is the streamathon uh, maturation progress. Uh, I don't even know how to say most of those words normally but anyway but but yeah it's just been fascinating to me this is the seventh annual streamathon and it's 
I don't know. It, it is an it is just an awe to me, and and to know that I've I've got a significant part in uh, making it happen every, every year is just kind of it's a little bit daunting and and humbling, and uh, that's 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 it. That's that's my personal pile uh, podcasting milestone is just <clears throat> the progress with the streamathon. You mentioned the streamathon. And how you like to you basically just sitting back waiting to make sure no no no, no emergencies happen, and when, <laughs> yeah, when we decided to make this an annual thing and really lean into it uh, around year three, I think we Im- imagined a day, we envisioned a day where you and I would basically start it and would stop it, and everything in between would happen through other hands, and it would just work. Yeah, and yet We're nearly this, there. <laughs> well, you're nearly there. This year, I am on. I'm personally appearing on three segments. I'm uh, uh, producing five total segments. So somehow, I'm getting more and more into it while you're kicking back more and more. Uh, I guess this, this is supposed to equal out for all the work that you do during the setup, whereas I'm basically just riding along on your coattails. Um, but yeah, it, it's uh, it's it's. The the yeses are easier to get is all I'm gonna say. So hopefully awesome. that mean, hopefully that means the money is easier to get for the uh, for the charity. <laughs> we'll see. Definitely, definitely. Uh, Richard, you hinted um, at your personal po- podcasting milestone. Um, would you care to elaborate? Yeah. So <laughs> I'm glad that you word this the way that you do. You're calling this a milestone. It's not a um, an achievement or a personal best or something. My milestone in podcasting this year is that I, I realized I just couldn't keep up with what I was doing. And it took me a long, long, long time to realize that I was denying it even well into the year when I hadn't had episodes out for months saying, Oh, okay, well, you know, I'll, I'll record this and then I'll get this out. And then weeks went by and weeks went by. And um, when you guys talk and you have episodes that hit uh, a month or more later, you, you're still talking about stuff that's going on in your lives. And unless you happen to mention July 4th or some other thing that you were doing, you don't necessarily know what what time you're talking about. In other words, your episodes are more evergreen and when I'm on a show talking about tech news and, mm. you know, it's what's going on in the smart home, which changes usually on a normal schedule before I've even published the episode that mm-hmm. we just recorded, it's it's just not something that I can put out a month later, two months later, whatever else. And with everything going on, with with living out of state for several months this year with uh, purchasing a house, refinancing our main house, now moving from the house we just refinanced with everything that's been going on, multiple clients and uh, just it's plus, you know, not coming out of COVID, but coming out of 2020, which was just such a, a jolt to everybody's system and trying to figure out now coming to the realization that the sin can be over. We're just going to have to learn how to live with this. Mm. And so how do we do that? And part of that for me was I had to give some stuff up. I had to let stuff go to the wayside. Now, I'm still not saying that certain projects are done. Like specifically the thing that suffered the most is my show home on. I don't want that to be done. And I think I, what I need to do is redefine it. I think I need to rethink what the show is and how I produce it to to allow it to live on. Um, it is the show that takes the most amount of time for me. Most other shows I show up, I do research beforehand, I talk about stuff and then somebody else produces it. This, I do all the work. I schedule, I record, I I interview, I prepare the notes, I prepare the interviews, I 
do all their editing and production and I'm a perfectionist about it and it was killing me and I was spending a good day and a half to get a perfect episode out for one hour, if that, of content. And I just couldn't do it anymore. So I need to rethink that because I want that show to live on. I think that there's a lot of, of value in that. And I think the way that I do it is to make it less news, more interviews, less about the less about the timely stuff and more about here's, you know, here's some this person talking about products or here's this person talking about this company and that can that can slip if it has to that doesn't have to be as timely so i'm in the process now of trying to figure out what that looks like ces is coming up i am taking the larger part of a week to work on stuff around ces i am sequestering with my co uh editor at the digital media zone this next week to do that and I do hope to get something out on Home On, but I, it's not going to look like what Home On has been before. So uh, that that was my milestone. It's not a happy one, but it was kind of a, a self acknowledgement, if nothing else. Mm-hmm. I, I yeah. tell you what, well, uh, last year I went through a period where I just couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> And this year, yep. Kent hit his wall where he just couldn't. And, you know, yep. you, people don't, I, I, I don't know that, that listeners of podcasts understand how much work, effort, and emotion goes into every episode, even if it's poorly produced. It's still a lot of, a lot of effort into it. Mm-hmm. Um, and burnout is a thing that you don't realize is real until you're burnt out. And sometimes you just need to take a step back. Sometimes you need to reassess. Sometimes you need to rebalance, which is where Kent and I currently are with Ritual Misery. We're trying to find a new balance between, um, mm-hmm. b- because life has changed. So trying to find a new balance between our, our home life, our work life, and our podcast. And that doesn't just go with just this. It's rebalancing of all the things. And we can't, haven't f- quite found that yet. We thought we had earlier this year, and turns out Sundays are bad for a lot of reasons. <laughs> um, yeah, no, and and yeah, it's just one of those things that I think every podcaster has to go through a forced rebalancing at, at some point, and you just gotta be I'm because just, you, I'm because you love what you do, so you don't want to leave. But years. yeah, yeah, I am shocked. That, that it took seven years for me to like really hit a burnout phase. Um, it's outside of military career and my kids. Th- seven years is by far the longest I've ever stuck to anything. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Um, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. It's a lot. It's a lot. So I think that realization, realizing that uh, you, you need to, kind of rethink and reprioritize and uh, it, I hope not walk away. I don't want to walk away, yeah. but I, I need to figure out how to, and I like, I like what you guys have done. And and I don't, you know, if there isn't an episode of ritual misery for, for weeks, I just know that you have life going on and that's okay. And I'd, I'd rather that than you be stressing about getting an episode out when, you know, like I said, we don't, if we're not on the live stream, we don't know any better when you talked about this stuff, right? <laughs> so, uh, I, I do what you're doing. And like the, the short interviews you're doing before the streamathon and everything with the participants on that, that has been great. And the, the energy you're putting into the streamathon is so exciting. I'm, I, I love what you guys are doing. And, um, it's interesting that we all kind of hit this wall roughly around the same time, yep. but, uh, I also feel like, I feel like COVID had a lot to do with it, right? Like if, if yeah. it hadn't been for the added stress that that put on everybody's lives, uh, we might not be having this conversation. Yeah. yeah. I was going to say, it's almost as if 2020 and 2021 were a bitch of, of a pair of years <laughs> right. for a lot of people. <laughs> I, I, I gotta say, uh, Finally, on something in my life, I was ahead of the curve because I was talking about 
talking to Kent about my burnout just before the pandemic really hit. <laughs> okay, and all right. You, you were look, yeah. you're already looking to scale down. Oh, you fucking hipster. You yeah, fucking yeah. I'm, I'm a fucking. I'm a hip, I'm a burnout hipster. Uh. <laughs> oh man, I just want to. While we're talking about the stream, I do want to just point out uh, Twitch.tv slash DC Streamathon. Uh, if you're not already following that channel, uh, please do. Uh, that channel is kind of the landing zone where it's got the schedule, it's got the pertinent information, uh, but it really is just a hosting channel. Uh, what we're asking you to do, uh, you know, if you just want to have something like on somewhere, you can you can go to that channel and just have it on, and it will auto host everything. But what we would love for you guys to do is when it, like if you go to twitch.tv slash DC streamathon and um, let's say uh, W Scott is one is streaming. What we would prefer that you do is go to W Scott is one's channel. Yeah. Uh, give him a follow. Um, if you really like what he's doing, drop him some bits, um, yep. donate to his, um, his extra life link, you know, to give him credit for, uh, for where you want to throw your 10 bucks or 20 bucks or whatever. Um, that's what we we want to not only raise money for kids, um, and and provide an entertaining place and an interactive place for people to go uh, on New Year's Eve, but also we want to build our community and support our community. So, for example, if Debbie Scott is one is streaming, and you're not familiar with his work and you enjoy it, we definitely encourage you to give him a, a follow. Um, a, a subscription, some bits, uh, not to mention, like I said, uh, donate to his his charity link. Yep. Um, th th that's what we would prefer that you guys do. Uh, but the hub for everything. So if you if you have to stop watching and then you come back later in the day and you're lost, you don't know who's streaming right now, twitch.tv slash DC Streamathon. It's all there. Everything's going to be auto-hosted. Um, it's 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 a one-stop shop. Um so definitely check that out. It's it's amazing every year, and it only gets better and better and better and better every single year we do this. So definitely check that out. Excellent. All right. And with all that, Richard, where can people find you? Well, on Twitter a lot. So the best <laughs> place to do that is at Richard Gunther, and you'll get my different perspectives voiced by a different persona all through that one account. There you go. Um, Kent, you're at RM underscore Del Noche when you decide to twit. Uh, allegedly, yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I've, yes. I've been Is I've that been, your porn um, account abstinent. now? <laughs> I've been abstinent from social media. Outside of Discord, I have not been on any social media. Oh, actually, I have been on LinkedIn this week. Not because I'm searching for another job, but not because somebody media. reached out to me. Okay, well, that's not social media. It's a ah, professional network. All right, it's a uh, it's a gateway drug to social media, I think. <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah, so outside of Discord and possibly LinkedIn, um, I've been abstinent from social media for several months at this point. Yep. Or no, I mean it's gone from several to many at this point. Uh, most of 2021, in fact. Um, but um, eventually, I am going to get back on Twitter. So yes, rm underscore del noche. Follow me there. Uh, give me a big surprise for when I log in there for the first time, and I've got, you know, 300 new followers. That would be fantastic. Wow, you're looking for a tenfold increase, huh? Hey, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I say that because the Buzztown Archives uh, almost has more followers than than I do. Uh, speaking of projects, <laughs> oh my god. Anyway. Um, you can find me on Twitter at Ethan Kane, E T H A N C A I N E. You can find the show on Twitter at Ritual Misery. And of course, you can go to ritualmisery.com for all things Ritual Misery, including our show notes. Um, and then I'm going to hit the, hit the music that you guys won't be able to hear. Um, <laughs> the, mu the music, of course, provided by, well, I don't say provided by, created by Kevin McLeod of Incompetech.com. And yeah. So. It's been a long year for me, for you, and for Kent. This has been your Richard Misery Podcast. See ya. And Richard! Bye. Thanks for mentioning me. Uh, 
I panicked. Yeah, I since we couldn't hear the music, I had no idea when the cues were. So, <laughs> and the video just uh, played with the music, but of course, ah, uh, case in point, case in point, I had no idea when the cue was. <laughs> well, because I'd muted that channel during a previous troubleshooting, so it didn't play for me, you, the audience didn't fucking play for anybody. So, yeah, there's that. <laughs> Fun. Uh,